I've been using the Knit Collection for almost 20 years. In that time, I've never seen such an interesting release as the new Knit Collection 8. I'm using a beta version of the software for this video, so there may be some minor differences from the launch version. We're starting with an image open in Photoshop, because the first change I want to share is the Knit Selection Palette tool. In version 7 of the Knit Collection, we have this floating window that's infamous now for getting in the way. Although we can minimise it, it isn't as convenient as the Docking Tools palette used by many Photoshop plugins. And that's the first change. DxO has adopted the Adobe plugin architecture, which means we now see the Knit Collection 8 in the plugin menu. But don't worry, it's still in the filter menu as well. The benefit of this change is that the Knit plugins now have individual panels which can be docked into the Photoshop interface. If I click the Colour Effects panel, you can see the new design has more space for displaying things like the favourite presets and filters. Each palette then has favourites to limit what's shown if you have a lot of favourites or items in the panel. In addition, we have a panel for the preferences, which we can also use to launch any of the Nick plugins. But we also have additional controls over important features, which we'll be discussing later. I really like the new panels because it's the same approach as other Photoshop plugins I use. The only thing that I haven't found in the new panels are the meta presets which were at the bottom of the old selection tool. Now it could be that these are missing from the beta software I'm using, or perhaps DxO has deliberately removed them. The meta presets somehow feel a bit redundant given all the new features in the Knit Collection 8. I also want to highlight that the new panels are only available in Photoshop. If you're using the Knit Collection in another tool like Affinity Photo or even Photolab, you won't see the panels. I also checked the installation in Adobe Photoshop Elements, and the new panels aren't available there either. But neither is the old style floating window. This means you'll need to use the filter menu there to launch the plugins as you will in Affinity Photo or in Photolab, the Knit Collection button. Let's look at some more new features now by editing our image using Knit Color Effects. We can do this by clicking the Color Effects panel and then the Open button. I'll start by adding a Pro Contrast filter and using the correct Color Contrast slider to fix a blue cast on this image. I also want to add about 20% dynamic contrast to the image to give the image more structure. I can see the water responding well to this, so I want to add more to that, but it's having too big an effect on the sky. I'll therefore add a second Pro Contrast filter to the image by clicking the plus icon. And we'll use this second copy of the filter to add 40% contrast and dynamic contrast to the image. Now, I could use a control line to select the foreground, but let's try out the new Color Mask Selection tool instead. You'll find this has been added to the Local Adjustments section of the filter. You'll also find this in all the filters that support Local Adjustments. To add it, I'll click the icon once, and then I can click on the image where I want to position the colour selection point. If we look at the mask this created, you can see it's selecting areas across the entire image based on colour. We can then use the colour controls to refine our selection, or pick a different colour. I also want to mention this small link icon which is easy to miss. When it's on, it links the controls on the colour strip, so that a change to a control on one side is reflected on the other. This probably seems like a tiny change, but it really makes the strip much easier to use. Looking at the mask now, we can see the selection affects the entire image including the sky. To remove it from the sky, we can add a negative control line. To do this, click on the control line icon and then click on the sky while holding down the option key on your keyboard. If you're using a Windows PC, that's the Alt key. This then removes the control line selection from the colour selection we made earlier. We can then position the sample point to select the blue of the sky. After that, we'll reduce the luminance and chrominance sliders so that the control line is removing the entire area. Something I should now point out is that we can check what's being selected by the individual masks on the selection control. But this doesn't tell us what the overall selection for the filter is. 
To see that, we need to use this mask icon at the top of the filter. Now we can see that the filter is only affecting the water on the beach. Let's add one final filter to the image, which is the Brilliance and Warmth filter. We'll use this to add some warmth to the sky and clouds using a control line. Then we can add a second control line to the filter to select the beach in the foreground. At this point I think we've produced a nice effect and the image looks good. Let's export this now using the quick export option at the top of the interface. Now previously this was a simple button to export a JPEG, but in the Nick Collection 8 we have more options. We can choose between exporting the image as a JPEG or a TIFF file, and this is also now how we open the preferences for the plugin. I'll just use the 16-bit TIFF option and export the image to the same folder as the original image. After that, let's switch to the Nick Silver Effects plugin to see if this image creates a good black and white shot. But before we switch, let's look at another new feature at the bottom of the interface. There have been a few changes in this area when using the Nick Collection 8 plugin from Photoshop, and we'll talk about some of those later. One of them though is that previously we'd see a brush button here, and that's been removed. In its place, we now have an option, Send as Layer. This creates a new layer in Photoshop when the application closes. If you're editing your image using Photoshop, I think this is a much more useful option than a TIFF file saved in the same folder as the original image. OK, let's go to Silver Effects now because there are more changes and it's a good way to see them. If you're familiar with Silver Effects, you'll immediately notice a difference. All the filters and controls that were previously on the right side of the screen have gone. Instead, we now see just a single film type section. This was in the old software, but it was buried towards the bottom and often overlooked. In my opinion, this is a great move because selecting the film type should be the first thing that we do when making a black and white conversion. But because it was out of the way below the other filters, it tended to be ignored or missed. So, where are the filters now? Well, they're over on the left side of the screen, along with the presets, just like in colour effects. Let's start with the presets and apply the street old vintage to this image. We then see the filters used by that preset appear on the right. Then if we switch to the street high contrast preset, the filters are replaced by the filters used by that preset. And if we select the default neutral preset, we return to the starting position without any adjustments. But the similarities with Nick Color effects don't end here. Let's make some changes to the image to look at a few more. First, we can select the Kodak 100 TMAX Pro film type. Then, we'll apply a red colour filter to the image by clicking the plus icon to the right. The filter is then added on the right of the interface where we can select the filter colour we want to use. While working with colours, you may also find that it's helpful to refer to the original colour image. This is something we haven't been able to do before. But now in the Nick Collection 8, we have a small preview of the original colour image. I've found this extremely useful whilst working with the beta software. Our next step is to add a basic adjustment to the image. This time, rather than clicking the plus icon to add the default filters, let's click the down arrow icon. This reveals a series of presets for the filter, just like we have in Nick Color Effects. If we click the BA05 preset, we see the filters added. And when we expand the sections, we see that the settings are applied to the image. At the bottom of the section, we also have local adjustments. Personally, I would have liked to have seen these as a separate filter of their own. By positioning them at the bottom of this group, I automatically think they're controlling where the basic adjustments are applied, but they don't. Let's select the foreground using the polygon tool and place the sample point on the water. As you can see, this doesn't affect the basic adjustments, which are still applied to the sky. If we want to change the area selected by the polygon, we need to use the local adjustment controls at the bottom of the local adjustments section. The other thing that I want to point out is that once a filter has been added, unlike in Nicola effects, you can't add a second copy. 
Instead, we see this indicator on the left of the filter showing that it's been used. Now, if we move our mouse over the filter, we see a minus icon, which is used to remove the filter from the image. I found myself clicking this a couple of times in error because I'm used to adding multiple filters in color effects. Now, let's add the Selective Tones filter. This can be used to adjust the highlights, midtones, shadows, and black tones globally in the image. But look at the bottom. We now see that it has a local adjustment section. Let's use this to add a control point to select the water in the foreground. We now see the same controls, but they're attached to the control point this time. What this means is that this filter will allow us to apply global changes to the entire image, but then apply different localized adjustments as well. We can see the same is also true of the Clearview filter when that's added. This time, we won't apply a global adjustment. Instead, we'll use a local adjustment to select the sky. Now, I could just add a control line to select it, but if you remember back to when we were editing in color effects, we already made that selection. One of the biggest new features in the Knit Collection 8 is that we can share and reuse masks between the different plugins. Notice this small icon to the right of the local adjustments. When I click this, we see the mask created by the other plugins during this editing session. I can then click the small plus icon to add the mask to this filter. I'm then able to apply my adjustments to the new mask selection. Let's leave the adjustments there now because there are some more changes to look at. Previously, there was an option to apply changes as a smart object when using Photoshop. This has been removed from the bottom of the interface, but it now appears in the right side of the apply button, which has been split. The left side still applies your changes and returns you to Photoshop, but the right side allows you to configure how. And it's here that we find the new smart objects option, along with a couple more. I'm still trying to wrap my head around all this because there are other places in the Knit collection where we can control layer behavior. So I can't give you a detailed explanation of everything or even suggest how to apply the settings without using the software more. For this example, we'll select the smart object option, but there's still something else that I want you to see. We have an option here to include plugin masks in the export. When I select this, we see the different selections added during this editing session, including those from other plugins. We can now select which of these that we want to apply. Let's select all of them now, and then we'll click the apply button. The plugin then processes the adjustments before returning us to Photoshop. Here we see the smart object with the two NIC filters applied to it. Then, looking at the channels panel, we can see several new channels have been added to this image. These are the masks that we created using local adjustment tools in the NIC plugins. This means that we can now use these masks in Photoshop. But this behavior isn't just one way. We can also take masks from Photoshop into the Knit collection to use them there. Let me give you an example by starting again and duplicating the image layer. We can then select the sky using the tools in Photoshop, and I'll use this to add that as a mask to this layer. This time when we launch one of the plugins, say Color Effects, we see this message. This is where we can select the mask or masks to use in the Nick plugins. Let's add a tonal contrast filter to the image to see how this works. In the filter, we can click the mask selector and choose to use the mask we imported from Photoshop. This works just the same way as the mask that we've been looking at that were created in the Nick collection. It makes for a hugely flexible editing platform where we can use the power of selection tools in Photoshop inside of the Nick Collection 8. This is a great enhancement to the Nick Collection, but it does come with a catch. Currently, Nick only exchanges masks with Photoshop. Hopefully, this is something that the team at DxO will work on and incorporate into other editing tools. Overall, there's a fair amount that's been packed into this latest release of the Nick collection, and a lot of it is quite innovative.
If you're interested in the pricing, it's on the website where you can also download a trial version, which I really recommend trying. I'll include a link in the YouTube video description to this. Now earlier in the video, we saw that the film type was now the first filter in Silver Effects Pro. This is a good move, but there's another filter that you need to use along with it. To learn what these vital first steps are when converting an image to black and white, watch this video. Don't forget to visit my website for more tutorials, and while you're there, why not subscribe? I'll include a link to it in the YouTube video description. I'll see you soon for another video.